Today's story was about a woman who was robbed. However, in instead of feeling bad about what happened, she felt heartbroken because of why the person committed such an action. Anyone who has been in the same situation as this woman would probably know how frustrating it is to have personal and important possessions taken away in an instant without explanation. Before we start, can we get this video to 1000 likes? Please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. What's worse is that the cops don't always end up with any convenient leads to follow. Sometimes the only thing that a person can do is to feel angry. Which is why it was definitely unusual for this woman named Christina Reitz from Lakewood, Washington, to feel the opposite. One morning, Christina Reitz was surprised when she noticed one of her butterfly adorned wind chimes hanging in her yard was missing. She didn't have a clue what happened. She felt frustrated and angry because the wind chime apparently has sentimental value for Christina. As she was walking back to her house, she discovered a note on her doorstep. The note came from a boy named Jake and said that he and his sister had stolen one of her windshields. Little did Christina know there was something more to what happened. What Christina discovered further left her heartbroken in the note. Jake explained that the stolen chime, which had butterflies on it, reminded him and his sister of their mother who passed away. A $5 bill was tucked inside the folded piece of notebook paper. I'm sorry, this is the only money I have. Please do not be mad. Jake wrote on the paper. Christina felt sorry for what happened, and she wanted to find Jake and give the boy back his money. She also wants to offer them their own wind chime similar to the one he and his sister took so they each can have a reminder of their mom. The problem was Christina lives in this suburb of about 600 people, and she did not know Jake. Christina then decided to put up a story on social media. She posted on a local group page asking if anyone knew Jake and word of her quest took off beyond the private group. Almost a week later, after an initial Facebook post as Chrissy Marie to her neighborhood group, and attention from media as far away as Great Britain, Reed still had not heard from the boy. She had five wind chimes, well, four now because she said she likes the sound they make. Christina mentioned it was not right that he stole or his sister stole. She also wasn't sure which one it was, but the fact that Jake did try to make things right was more than enough for her to forgive him. I'm not going to hold a grudge for a wind chime that was less than $5, she said. I don't even know the age of the kids, but I don't want him to be scared to come forward. Christina also said she can relate to what Jake and his sister are going through. Sadly, Christina also lost her mom when she was just five years old and just a few years ago, she also lost her father. Losing a loved one is a tough position to be in. Regardless of age, people grieve in different ways. Fortunately, after a few days, someone who introduced herself as Jake's aunt posted in the Facebook group, revealing that she knew the boy and where they live. Christina was happy she finally had a lead as to the whereabouts of Jake and his sister. She said she had been in contact with the family, but the members wished to remain anonymous at that time. They are grieving and everything is overwhelming for them, Christina said. On a lighter note, Christina and the children plan to meet in person soon and get to know more about each other. Let's move on to the next story. Extreme Trinan's presence, mom takes family photo but doesn't see the danger that's hiding in plain sight when Annika met Tim Boiling for the very first time. Before we start, can we get this video to 1,000 likes? Please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. She was instantly drawn to him for a number of reasons. He was not only witty and fun to be around, but his jokes filled with sarcasm then would simply crack her up every single time. Before she knew it, Annika was happily married to Tim and they had a beautiful baby boy together named Shane. Their little family that lived in Highland Park, New Jersey was a prime example of joy, pure love and sweetness until a catastrophe struck that altered them and their lives forever. Being a cycling enthusiast, Tim would often go on bicycle rides, during which he would declutter his mind and let go of his everyday worries. For him, cycling was almost therapeutic and helped him relax, so it made sense that he encouraged Annika and Shane to ride their own bicycles with him. Annika would often notice her husband using humor and sarcasm as an attempt to ignore his problems or worries. 
but she never thought about it too much since Tim always had a carefree and joyous persona. One day, during a family picnic, Tim, Annika, and Shane, who was 10 years old at the time, rode their bicycles to a surreal clifftop that overlooked an ocean. After having some light supper, Annika pulled out her Polaroid camera and started clicking some pictures of Tim and Shane sitting together. As the photograph emerged out, she couldn't help but smile wide at the sight of her husband and son grinning excitedly while being caught up in a truly heartfelt moment. What Annika couldn't see, however, was Tim's underlying struggle that was never visible on the surface. On one unfortunate day, Tim took his own life after losing his battle against clinical depression. Although he was surrounded by supportive and loving family members and friends, he couldn't find another way out. After suffering from the mental illness for several months or maybe a year, Annika had started noticing his increasing dependence on alcohol, which certainly stemmed from his emotional issues he had been facing. Before Tim knew it, he had turned into a severe alcoholic and therefore went to seek treatment for it. Due to his jolly personality and humorous exterior, almost no one can tell that he was constantly bottling up his emotional distress, which ultimately worsened his depression. After Tim's death, Wallica and Shane underwent the stages of grief, but more importantly, they educated themselves about the illness that took Tim's life. He had this depression that made him feel like there was no other way out, and the cassette? Some people can get treatment and help and survive their depression, others can't. Now a single mother, she told Shane about the invisible disease that took his father away from him. The little boy didn't really know if there was anyone who offered a helping hand to those suffering from clinical depression, but he wanted to take action and practically help those who were going through the same mental illness that his deceased father went through. That's when Shane, along with Annika, came across a charity organization called Hope for Depression Research Foundation that helps patients with underlying mental illness by providing them suitable treatment from professionals so that they can take the path towards healing. Shane and Annika volunteered for the foundation, and the innocent 10-year-old boy thought of a brilliant creative idea to raise funds. Clad in yellow t-shirts with a phrase depression doesn't ride printed on it along with a bicycle symbol that paid a tribute to Tim Boyland. Shane rode 10 miles through Johnson Park together with his friends to raise awareness and funds for the organization. His dedication towards the goal of contributing to save and improve the lives of those struggling with depression inspired a lot of other people in the community to volunteer for the organization as well. Not only Annika, but the staff running Hope for Depression Research Foundation were all incredibly proud of Shane. The Boylan family story teaches us that we must reach out to those who are having a hard time emotionally and offer them help in any way that we can before it's too late. And that's it for today.